I suppose you have some games. Hey guys, welcome back to Classic G-Body Garage. Well, as I pull these cars apart, uh, I figure what I'd do is show some of you how to pull a dashboard out of a G-Body. Maybe uh, some of you already know how to do it. What's up, Moby? And maybe some of you don't. So, it is a little bit of a job. I've done this many times, so I'm, uh, I'm used to it. So, some of you guys who have never done this before and and wonder what it takes to pull the dashboard out of a G-Body. Uh, this is the video of how to do so. And basically all of these dashboards in these cars, although they uh, may look different to an extent, they all bolt down the same way. So uh, I'm gonna go, go ahead and show you guys all of the uh, typical uh, all the areas where these bolts are hidden and how to go about pulling one of these dashboards out. So. Here you have a 78 Cutlass. This is the same thing as a 78 through 88 dash. Uh, same as any other G-Body. So the, uh, the screws, the bolts, everything that holds these dashboards in place, there is one underneath each one of these speaker covers. Looks just like that guy right there. And that is a Torx head. So you have four of them across the top. One, two, three, and then four underneath this one here. All right, now, as far as the bolts, all the rest are underneath, except for one hidden behind that vent, which I will show you here in a minute. So I uh, pulled the head, went ahead and pulled the steering column out of this car already. It is sold, and that makes it very easy to get to one of the bolts that is hidden right there. You gotta either drop the steering column or go ahead and remove it, but this is a uh, big metal plate that goes above the steering column. Here's the uh, steering column bolts or studs right there. And that 13 millimeter bolt right there goes through that metal plate and up through the frame of the dashboard and bolts to the body itself. There's some structure uh, behind the dashboard that that bolts to, so. Uh, uh. Uh, all right, there's a bolt right there. You can see it since the radio is out. There's an access hole up through the dash right there. Boop, my finger going through right there. That's a 10 millimeter. That bolts also to a bracket. See that bracket right there? And that bolts to the body itself as well. So that is the center bolt. There is not one on the other side, just one right there. And then you have the bolts on either end of the, of the dash. So there's one right there, right above the hood latch. And then, see right there, 10 millimeter. And then let me walk around to the other side. And I will show you guys how it is fastened on this side. All right. Same deal on this side. There's a bolt right there. You can see it. Usually some ground wires attached to it. And that holds the dashboard on the passenger side bottom. Now, the tricky one, which caught me pulling out the very first cutlass dash is there is a seven millimeter bolt right there. There's a wood grain piece that fits across the front here, which has the two vents. And that bolt right there attaches the dash to the, uh, the heater box. You, now you don't have to remove the wood grain uh, piece. You can, you can stick a socket through, through one of the vents and access that, but I went ahead and pulled the wood grain off of this one just because I wanted to keep it. It was in good shape. So uh, it's easier also if you pull the uh, glove box off. These dashboards are a little bit heavy, a little bit awkward once you uh, get them loose. But those are all of the fastening points of a cutlass dash at least. A Monte Carlo and Malibu are the same exact way except they do not have that bolt going through the uh, vent right there. There's nothing on the Malibu or Monte Carlo on that side. So also when removing a dashboard, things you need to keep in mind, the e-brake cable release, that goes through the dashboard, so you have to unhook it from the, uh, the e-brake uh, bracket itself up underneath there. And then also the, uh, the fuse box. Now there is, uh, let me see, I think there's like two, two bolts that, that, that the uh, fuse box screws to the body but then you cannot forget 
the uh, large bolt that goes through the center of the, the uh, fuse box that holds the two halves together. Uh, I'll show that to you uh, once I get the fender off. Actually, you can see it right here. If I can maybe point to it, but right in the center of the uh, the uh, block where it goes through the firewall, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the outer and the inner halves together. So make sure you uh, undo those, and it'll be a whole lot easier to pull that dash out. So I don't really think I forgot anything, but I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this dash out, and you guys can see once I get it out exactly what it looks like. Okay, I got a mess full of uh, bolts and fasteners on the floor there. Everything is taken out, and I'll show you guys this is uh, pretty much all that holds it in. You can see everything is everything's loose, basically ready to come out. There were a couple things that I forgot to mention. The uh, heater assembly in here, I went ahead and removed that because you have the uh, blend door cable that goes from the uh, heater unit and it goes up to the blend door right here. So carefully remove the retaining clip because that is plastic and you don't want to break that little plastic uh, end off there. So cable comes off there. Uh, went ahead and pulled some of the vacuum lines off of the, uh, the diaphragm right there. And then you also have the plug right here because that's all part of the harness. So what you need to do is unplug it. This plug just slips onto the uh, little clip that's right there. So go ahead and unplug it just like that. So you are separated from the harness that goes out through the firewall. Uh, you have the vacuum lines that are loose. So those are all the vacuum lines will stay from the heater unit will stay on the heater box itself. So that is separate. So now what I'm ready to do is unbolt the fuse block and from the firewall down below and then I'll go ahead and take that center bolt out of the, uh, the fuse block on the other side and we'll get this dash out of the car. All right, I got a better view here for you of the fuse block that goes through the firewall. I went ahead and pulled the wiper motor out and you can see the, the 10, 10 millimeter bolt that goes all the way through the center of it. You loosen that up and you can pull the, uh, the fuse block out and I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Went ahead and removed the two that hold it, hold, hold the uh, fuse block to the firewall. There's, there's one right there and then there's one right there and it literally just pulls completely away. It's just hanging here. So it looks like I'm pretty much ready to pull this dash out. I'm going to do it with one hand since I'm holding the camera. I don't have my little tripod here with me. Uh, so here it goes. We'll see if it comes out. It is all coming off here. And there you go. The whole thing just drops right back in your lap. So there you go. That's how you pull the dashboard out of a G body. And uh, as you can see, I have a, a few things here that I need to uh, disconnect because a lot of these wires do run up through the body, you know, like the de rear window defroster and the, uh, the uh, courtesy lights and, and the uh, rear tail light harness, which is this one right here with these uh, colorful wires right here. So I need to go ahead and unhook all of that, but you guys pretty much get the idea. So make sure you guys are subscribing leaving comments, all that good stuff, and you'll find out more about all these cool G-bodies. All right, guys, until the next classic G-body garage video, I will talk to you next time.